Hi, it's time to get on the road again, and before doing that, there's some work to be done. For me, that always starts with tires. Over the last 15 years, we've owned four different campers. We've had seven blowouts. All seven of the blowouts came on one camper, so there was something unique with that situation, and it was something that I did learn from. So hopefully I can share with you some of the things that we can do to prevent this from happening and then what you need to do if you have to deal with it. Everyone talks about the, the three things to consider with tires. That's the tire pressure, the weight on the camper, and then the speed of the vehicle towing. I'm going to throw out to you that there's another and that's well, actually two more, certainly the age of the tires, and then the weight of your axles. And this is something that manufacturers tend to not put enough credibility to on a regular basis. So we'll look at all this in just a bit. If it seems like I'm a little over the top with the tire subject, it's because I am. I'll bring back again seven blowouts. The first blowout we had was going into the tunnel in Mobile. Happened just as we were entering the tunnel. Heard it go boom. Had to drive all the way through until we could find a place to pull over. There is no way to stop. Then we had to wait on the tow truck for over an hour and a half. I can tell you, yes, good Sam's will send a truck, but then you're reliant upon that truck getting there when they get through doing something else. So uh, after that, I found that I just take care of my own. I do keep that service for other reasons, but as far as for a blowout, I take care of my own. Some things that I found to be very helpful in working with tires. A tire inflator and this particular one is happens to be cobalt. There are several good ones out there. Battery pack on the thing, and I'll show you how that works in a bit. This works very well. You've gotta have something that has quite a bit of pressure though. Uh, tires on this camper, about 80 pounds PSI. This will do about 110, so it claims, even at the 80 pounds though, it can be slow, but I found that this has been able to take care of airing up all four tires. Certainly the advantage to this, I keep the battery pack charged up and attached in the camper so I've got it with me all the time and I can do this very easily. I can walk around, I can set the, uh, the pressure on it and it will cut off when it reaches that pressure. I can be doing something else while it's doing that and then when it cuts off I can come back, move to the next tire and set it. Works very well. Sheer basics at that point, got to have the lug wrench. And then I do like the one that folds up, takes up less space so that you can put it in a much easier area to put it in. Hydraulic bottle jack. And at that, this concerns me just a bit. There's a lot of ways that this could be could be risky and so I've, I've got some issues with this actually I've done it before to where I've pulled up on I've loaded firewood up and and pulled the camper up on top of the firewood to be able to get it up high enough to change the tire to be able to avoid having to use this I've got another piece ordered now 
it should be in uh, hopefully get it in tomorrow and then I'll make it part of this video and I think it's got some real promise going along with uh, this is that I can take this battery off put it on an impact wrench and then of course you can't buy just one so you have to buy several of the different fittings here but rather than battling with this found this on sale it really works well and so something you may want to consider something I forgot to mention earlier in my list of tools this piece of foam packing material your knees will thank you The tire inflator is one of the best tools I own. As you can tell, extremely lightweight. You don't have to drag power cords around with you. You don't have to drag air compressor air lines with you. Uh, you just undo the nozzle here. Take the battery. power on don't know that that'll show up anywhere and then you press up or down to set the pressure that you want to have for this uh, these tires call for a max of 80 pounds I'll run five pounds under I just believe that that's a better way to handle it so that when I'm running in extremely hot situations I've got a little more leeway I've read different things manufacturers say you can run the full pressure but at the same time I've just not had a problem running five pounds under so I have it set now to where it'll cut off at 75 pounds so the first thing before I look leave is just to check the pressure they may be perfectly fine which is great if that's the case and it's a very easy way to do that In this case, the pressure shows to be 70.8. So, all I have to do is hit the run button. And I can get up and do something else. That simple again don't figure you can see it 75 pounds
This one shows 71.4. I won't bore you with filling it up, but you can see how easy it is just to move from place to place and have this taken care of. It takes very little time, so good tool to have. Notice there are two load ratings on the tire. First for a single axle where it shows that it would carry a weight of 2,830 pounds. Then a dual axle where it would show a load rate of 2,470 pounds. In this case, with dual axles under our camper, you would take the 2,000 470 times 4 to come with the maximum load weight the tires will carry of 9,880 pounds at 80 PSI. Next, notice the speed rating L. L means the tire has a maximum speed rating of 75 miles per hour. Tires can vary on this. You can have a maximum rating of 60, 65. It can vary, so please pay attention to this when you're looking at your tires. Then notice the tire shows the country of origin where it was made, in this case China. I've had tires made in China, I've had tires made in the U.S., and I've blown up each of them. I typically don't pull over 65 miles per hour. I do check the pressure to the point to where I even bought tire minders to help to keep this from being a problem and had a tire blow out. And the tire minder did sound off that there was a problem right after I heard the tire blow up. The problem I discovered was the tires, the RV manufacturer put on the unit and recommended for it were just rated a little heavier than an empty unit would be. So when we loaded it up, it would put too much stress on them and that's what created our problem. Unfortunately, uh, this is not an uncommon problem. It's something that needs to be looked at uh, before running to make sure that your loaded gross weight and your tires are a match for each other. This is a very important sticker to read and understand before purchasing an RV. This sticker shows the gross vehicle weight rating on our camper to be 7,850 pounds. That weight includes the camper, propane, food, water, anything that might go in it. It shows the gross axle rating to be 4,400 pounds per axle. The unloaded vehicle weight of this camper is 6,076 pounds. This means with a gross vehicle weight of 7,850 less the weight of the unloaded vehicle of 6,076 pounds that we should be able to have 1,774 pounds of cargo, water, etc. I found these numbers could vary wildly from one unit to another and you'll notice on this sticker it doesn't show you what the weight limits are of the tires so this is where you can get into a problem the other problem you can have is you'll notice on this one each axle showing a load bearing weight of 4400 pounds which gives you a gross weight of 8800 pounds so there's a thousand pounds extra to be able to work with there. I found several units that had 3,500 pound axles under them 
with very similar gross vehicle weight ratings here. Even two that I've had that I looked at from this manufacturer. If the gross vehicle weight exceeds the axle weight, it can create a problem with the axle bowing in in the middle under a full load, which will cause the tires to bow out at the bottom, which will cause them to run on the inside part of the tire rather than the full base of the tire. This will put extreme wear on that inside part, plus develop a higher heat that increases the likelihood of being able to have a blowout. While checking your air pressures, don't forget to check the pressure on the truck tires. In this case, these tires indicate that they should have a maximum PSI of 51 pounds. That would be awfully heavy for my taste. Uh, typically, I'll run about 40 pounds on a truck tire. To add to the confusion, the sticker inside the cab of the truck suggests a 35 PSI for the tires. I did go check they are the same tire sizes as shown on this sticker. I think I'll just stick with my 40 pounds and feel good about it. All right, well, I think we're going to wrap it up for today. I hope the information provided saves you some aggravation and expense, uh, maybe even to make a better purchasing decision. I know that I'd said that I was going to cover a piece on uh, jack that's going to replace my hydraulic bottle at that I think that I've gone deep enough into this today that I don't want to go that long on this so I'll cover that piece on another day I appreciate your watching have a nice day